there is special part of uh, our debates uh, giving to both of us un in unpredictable way uh, as the world glory. So everybody insists we will translate the second part of our debates. Why? Because the concept of Europe. And precisely the, uh, the, the, in our debate, when I read again our, our, our polemical uh, article, and uh, I was, you know, crazy, believing that Europe can be think seriously only as Hegel and Heidegger, and especially most responsible guy, um, the Husserl insists. It's mean from Greek to today. And in answer, as you remember, you accused me saying this is stupidity. <laughs> this is stupidity. There is no Europe, uh, there is no Europe before, I don't know, 17 century, for example, in empirical, strictly empirical sense. There is only mythology about the Europe. What Husserl is saying about Europe, this is philosophical stupidity about Europe. And this is a question <laughs> about Europe. Okay. All right. So let me answer about Europe, and then I have a question for Stathis also, or a comment. Or a comment, or a, com or a comment. All right, so these days I'm reading uh, Xenophon. I'm reading the um, Anabasis of, Kiro, of Kiros. And as you might know or remember, um, there were 10,000 Greek um, uh, um, uh, paid so, so, soldiers, but Mr. Fori. Uh, uh, paid soldiers, yeah. There is a certain word for this. Mercenaries, thank you. Uh, 10,000 mercenaries who were invited or uh, conscripted, rather, by uh, Cyrus to fight against his, uh, his brother Artaxerxes, and then they, they started walking back to Greece. And Xenophon, at some point, says that they were standing at the edge of Byzantium, the, the, the city, uh, at the edge of Asia, looking over at Europe, right? I mean, he, he says the word, right? They are standing at the edge of Asia, looking over Europe. So um, I understand this concern about Europe. I understand the concern about the construction of Europe. I understand how we are willing to say that Europe has not always existed. And of course, the way that we mean this, Europe has not always existed. But it's not a new concept. It's not the, the concept of something which is different from what lies beyond uh, the Hellespontus, beyond the, um, the Sea of Marmara, beyond the, the bridge of in Istanbul is, is real. It's something that is foundational in the ways in which we actually understand uh, Europe. In the, it's foundational in the ways in which Husserl conceptualized the, the, the construction of the concept of Europe, right? I mean, there is something there in, in, um, in grammatology, I mean, not Derrida's grammatology, in, in ancient grammatology that actually has set this uh, all in, in motion. Um, but, but as we all know, Europe is, is a multiple concept. We, Europeans themselves don't understand Europe the same way. Um, at one point when, during the, um, the Milosevic, the um, International uh, uh, Court of Human Rights, when it was, it was going on with Milosevic, um, someone said that, someone who was working on the, uh, <coughs> at the court, I mean, as an anthropologist who was working as an anthropologist on the, uh, studying the, the course, um, mentioned the, the fact that um, it, it was a time when Milosevic and uh, Rwanda also, was, I mean, there were two cases that first appeared at the international courts um, of human rights, right? Um, it, there were only two, Rwanda and, and Yugoslavia, right? And I said at, the point, at that time, well, it's, isn't it interesting that no European countries actually have been brought 
in front of the, of the International Court of Human, Human Rights. And the anthropologist said, what are you talking about? Yugoslavia is there. And we went into this entire debate as to who understands Yugoslavia as part of Europe. And certainly France and Germany and anyone west of the Danube probably um, didn't at the time. The, the, the entire understanding of the war, of, of that kind of war, that war which had already, we had already left behind as Europe was still happening in places that were not terribly European, the, the understanding was going, right? The, what happened in Srebrenica, what happened with Bosnia, was always thought of as something which lies at, at, at the margins of Europe, right? I mean, this is, this is not Europe. This is, when we talk about Yugoslavia, we're not talking about Europe, right? When Greece, Greece is not really Europe. Um, certainly Turkey is not Europe. Right? So, so the ways in which, or Spain, Right? I mean, when we talked to, with Germans, we saw that with the International Monetary Fund and the, um, the crisis in 2008 uh, with the acronym for PIGS, right? So Portugal, uh, Ireland, Greece, and Spain, right? Um, who were really outside of the core of Europe. They were the, the countries that were actually infecting Europe with with, not with ideas, but with a, a poison that, that, that Europe had tried to disinfect from, it, from, from its core with the establishment of the European Union. So the, the ways in which Europe gets reconstructed and, and reconceptualized constantly is what needs to be put again anew under interrogation, right? I mean, to, 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 for, for us to take into account the fact that the idea of, of that monolithic Europe is, is just a, a tool um, of neoliberal uh, economies. It's, uh, I can't believe that this word came out of my mouth, but you know what I mean. Um, so, so I, I think that that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a problem that um, Stathis's book actually tries to tries to address. But I wanted to say something else, <clears throat> and you will probably disagree, Stathi, <laughs> because we have we have rehearsed this argument, uh, as you can imagine, over the past 15, 20, 20 years, right? Um, and it goes back to Tanya's first question and, and to Buddy's um, uh, first question also, as to what actually brings these essays together. And I think that, of course, I'm not in literary studies, I'm not in literature, I'm not a philosopher at all, but reading these, these essays, um, I think that the, the anchor is the essay on Antigone. And, and what that essay does is that it brings together the question of responsibility both for philosophy and for literature, right? It is the, it is the essay that brings up the argument that these two different forms of thought actually um, fix at a point that both of them have this in, at their core, which is the responsibility of the thinker towards not just the reader, but also the, the context that has come together to produce, to make that sort of thought possible. Yeah, well, I don't disagree. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree actually on this one at all. I, I, that, that would say just a couple of things. The, the essay is called Philosophy's Need for Antigone. The, Question: This was a, this is an actual thing. Why is Antigone the key texts of, of, of 19th century and even 20th? Because Heidegger, German philosophy, why are they so obsessed with this particular thing? And you know, there's an easy, easy explanation. It's about law and disobedience. It's about uh, um, uh, family versus uh, 
state, uh, um, you know, the, the gender question is actually not, con never doesn't concern them at all. Uh, but, um, but for me, that wasn't the key. The key it was that um, I, I'm arguing for a certain kind of performative knowledge that, a certain kind of theatrical knowledge that uh, literature uh, uh, can bring, even though it is in, the, in between two covers and you turn pages and you read it, nonetheless, it, it, what it does, as opposed to philosophy again, uh, is a certain kind of performative, uh, um, it, it creates performative conditions for understanding, where the reader is engaged in a kind of theatrical situation. Um, and, and that's why the, you're right. The, I mean, you're completely right. The essay is definite, that one is definitely, and it's in the middle which I didn't intend, by the way, but, but as in retrospect, it is the pivot point. Uh, the, the other is Kafka, but Kafka is everywhere. Uh, but, uh, and the Kafka piece follows exactly that one, now that I'm thinking. All of this I did not plan. But there is really, um, uh, there, that's, that, yeah, you're right. I, I, can't, I can't, I don't disagree. That's actually true. Just to add, Kafka's piece is coming after Antigona because you have the, your, your like borrowing from Benjamin, but explaining more precisely the theory of gestures which makes Kafka's yes. work and literature exactly. in general a performative uh, yes. act, exactly. Exactly. as I remember, so. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's about the sirens and so, so yeah. even even Kafka's parables. Yeah. 